and welcome back to my channel. I'm Ellie Lullaby and this is my corgi puppy Mia and today we're doing a Mia Q&A. Um, so if you guys don't follow Mia on Instagram, it's at Mia my Mia and I posted a picture asking you guys for questions that you'd like to know about Mia. And you guys had some pretty good ones so let's get on to the video. Also guys, I have toys up here because Mia is a scatterbrain and she'd totally run off if I didn't have something to entertain her with. So the first question is from this username here and they write, is she sassy? I think all corgis in general are pretty sassy so yes, a part of their breed is that they're a bit willful. So they're really smart and they understand commands and they learn really quickly, but they don't always want to do what you're asking of them because they're willful and they want to do whatever else they want to do. I mean, just look at that pooch. <laughs> if that's not sassy, I don't know what is. Like, seriously, are you having fun? <laughs> All right, so my next question comes from Mellow Knight and they ask, was it easy to educate Mia and is she an easy learner? So the answer to that question is yes. Corgis are very smart. They are the 11th smartest breed, I think. And um, generally when I train Mia to do something, she'll get it really quickly. Sometimes on the first training session, sometimes I need to do a couple training sessions for her to get it. Sometimes I teach her one thing one time and she didn't quite get it, but she sort of got it. And then I'll come back months later and I'll ask her to do the thing and she'll just know what it is and do it. Like she's crazy smart, it's ridiculous. She also loves training with us. I think it's like a really good way to bond with her. She really enjoys working for her food and feeling like she has like a place and a purpose in our doggy pack. Also, I'll do some little tricks to show you guys. What is this? Ooh, snap. Good girl. All right, do you want to do high five? Yes, good girl, good girl. And bye. Good girl. Those were just a few of the many tricks she knows. So our next question comes from Reveni and they ask, how did Mia get her name? I think what happened when we chose Mia was I was like scrolling through an online list of names and I saw Mia was one of the names and the moment I saw the name Mia, I was like, oh my God, that's such a beautiful name. And I told Ryan it and he's like, oh my God, yes. That is a really nice name. And it was really interesting because just before we found Mia, we'd come to a conclusion of a list of like, I think two to three names. And we were just like, oh, I'm just not sure if any of those names really suit our puppy. And then I was like, okay, I'll have one last search. And when I did that, we found the name Mia. So I think this one comes from Tona Miz Washing Up. And they ask, what was her first toy or costume? Her first costume was a unicorn onesie. And I'll put a picture up so you guys can see it. It's so cute, she was so small. And now she's like a bit bigger and the costume doesn't fit her as well. But I got it from Kmart, which is like a store here in Australia. I think there's Kmart's worldwide actually. But yeah, I got it from Kmart and it was really cheap and pretty good quality for a dog costume. And her first toy was this little pink flea that we bought and I think it was from the company called Fuzz Yard. Okay, so my next question comes from It's Isaac here. And he asks, when you went to the breeders, why did you choose Mia? And that's a really good question because when we were sent all the photos of the puppies in the litter, uh, we were lucky enough to be the first ones to get the first pick and we wanted a girl. So we got the first pick of the girls, like besides the breeder. And we really liked this one. We'd given them all code names and we really liked this one that we'd codenamed Flower. So we're really invested in this puppy that we had codenamed Flower. Um, Mia's code name was Unicorn and we just didn't really see much of Mia in the photos that we were sent. She was kind of always off on her own. Like I named her the mystery pup for so long because I was able to tell all the puppies apart by the markings on the back of their neck. Mia basically never had like the back of her neck shown in any photos. When we went up to the breeders to see all the puppies and meet them, we had Flower out as well as Mia and this other puppy that we had codenamed Eclipse and they were all running around having fun. And we noticed that Flower was actually a bit not so confident. She was a bit shy and it took a bit of a while to warm up. Whereas Mia was really spunky. And the mum was running around with all the puppies and the mum would like nip the puppies and like sort of get them into line a little bit. And Mia was the only puppy that sort of nipped her mum back and was like, no, don't do that. <laughs> So we liked that spunky little attitude and nature that she had and we thought that she was really cute and sort of like 
yeah, just spunky. So we liked her spunky attitude and that's why we picked her. Next question is, what was something that surprised you the most slash something you didn't expect after getting Mia? I would probably say I didn't really realize the amount of work that goes into getting a new puppy, like not just a corgi, for instance but just any new puppy because you just have to train them so much in the first couple months that you have them you have to train them to go to the toilet outside you have to like constantly be cleaning up the little accidents that they do in the house whenever I had to leave the house for a little bit and come back it was really hard for me to leave her because I know that she was just crying because I could just hear her crying as I was leaving the house but it's also really important for them to learn to be by themselves having a new puppy in general you're not really prepared for it at all until you you get one and then you realize the amount of work that goes into it but it gets better <laughs> so hang in there I'd also say take them to puppy school as soon as you can because socializing them when they're really young and getting them used to like different experiences is so important so I have another two questions from Isaac here so I'll go through them both at the same time and he asks why did you pick a corgi have you liked them for ages and also were there any other corgis you were looking at before you chose Mia? Ryan and I had decided that we wanted to get a pet together and we thought that we'd get a dog. And when we started researching what breeds would like work best for us, we found three breeds and they were Labrador, Golden Retriever and Corgi. And we ended up going with Corgi just because like they had more of a spunky, fun personality and also because they were a smaller dog. Because we were like renting a house at the time, and we didn't know like where we'd live in the future and things like that. We wanted a smaller dog, a dog that we can take places pretty easily and you know, stuff like that. So we ended up choosing Corgi and we got really excited about it and then I started looking up Corgis on the internet and then I realized that Corgis are actually a really big deal and that the internet loves them. So <laughs> it was actually really cool for me because once we decided on the breed, I was able to look up a whole bunch of like funny Corgi videos and things like that. And I was like, yes, this is definitely the type of dog that I want. It was like a happy accident, really. Oh, you win. So the Corgis that I was looking at on Instagram before I chose Mia were Marcel the Corgi. And I think she's a fluffy corgi in France. I was also looking at Gatsby the corgi by Vlog After College. Cause like, obviously I like YouTube. So I typed in corgi into YouTube and all his videos came up. So we got to live vicariously through Ryan and Gatsby for a little bit. <laughs> this next question is, what is Mia's favorite treat? I think Mia's favorite treat is these cranberry and liver like cookies. Um, I'll insert a picture of what they look like, but she goes nuts for them. Oh, that's a cute question. How is Mia so cute? I mean, just look at her. Like, she is adorable. <laughs> okay, this next question asks, how do you get her to be so chill when you feminate her? Well, if you watch that video, we were constantly giving her little bits of broken up treats so that she would like be chill and calm and understand that this is like a good thing that's happening. I know some animals don't like to be brushed and I think it's definitely something they have to get used to. Oh, little pumpkin the corgi asked me a question. <laughs> Yay. Little pumpkin asks, how is Mia always so photogenic? Your photos are always so awesome. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Uh, if you guys watched my last video, I think it's like how to take photos of your pet for Instagram. Basically, that's how I get her to like look into the camera and stuff. Okay, if you guys can hear that, that's my cat meowing. So go watch that video if you want an in-depth response. This next question asks, Mia seems so well mannered. Did she attend obedience school? Please share how you trained her. We did end up taking her to puppy school, I think when she was about four months old for yeah, four or five months old, which is a bit old for a puppy. Um, the reason for that was, I've shared this on my Instagram before, but I haven't shared it on my YouTube. Mia actually had a PDA. We noticed it when she was two months old and she had to have surgery for it. So because she was going through surgery and recovering and things like that, we weren't able to take her to puppy school when you're supposed to, which is about two months old. So she had to go to a little bit of an older puppy school, but it was so beneficial. Other than that, Corgi are really stubborn so you have to be more stubborn than your corgi so if you want them to do a certain behavior you can never give them an inch because they'll run a mile you always have to be reinforcing your rules 
and I think that's why Mia is so well behaved because we always reinforce our rules and we always tell her no when we don't want her to be doing something and we always praise her when she does the right thing and we say good girl and if we're like seriously trying to reinforce a type of behavior we'll say good girl and give her a treat okay this is a really good next question guys because I get asked this a lot on my YouTube why is it that Mia has a tail when most corgis only have little nubs and that is actually quite a sort of sad answer it is possible for Welsh Pembroke corgis to be born without a tail and to have like a little nubby tail but most of the time it's not natural and the breeders actually dock the tails here in Australia we have laws against the docking of corgi tails and I think that's really good because now having a corgi with a tail you can really see so much of their personality in their tail like when they're happy they wag the tails a lot and I know I have seen some corgis on the internet that sort of wiggle their bodies to show that they're really happy but like the tail shows so much personality and like I just couldn't imagine her without her tail like she looks like a little fox she's so cute but yeah it's actually a very sad truth I know that some places you can ask breeders not to dock the tails and to keep their tail some breeders do it some don't um, so if you're in another country and you want a corgi ask your breeder see if that's a thing that's possible but yeah here in Australia uh, laws are against it no corgis are allowed to have dock tails this next question asks where did you get her from um, now, a lot of people ask me that question as well, and I'm going to tell you the answer as to why I don't answer this question. Because I put myself out there online, and because Mia has like a decent following going now, I'm getting asked where I got Mia a lot. And it's already so hard to get corgis, especially in Australia, because there are so few breeders, that if I told you guys where exactly I got her, my breeder would be inundated with people asking like, can I have a corgi, can I have a corgi? and I already know that every breeder in Australia has a waiting list of over 20 people like it's so hard to get a corgi so I'm not gonna tell you the breeder I wouldn't want to keep it a secret from you guys but like it's also not my information to be giving out like this is some person's private information like I don't want to be telling everyone they don't need to be inundated with like requests also the breeder that I got Mia from doesn't have the dogs that Mia was bred from anymore so you guys wouldn't be able to get um, a dog that's like Mia anyway. What I can tell you guys is that if you are in Australia go on the dogs online website I'll link it below and you can find and message breeders on that site and they're accredited breeders in Australia so you know that you're actually getting like a purebred puppy that isn't from a puppy farm or anything like that. I hope that answer wasn't too rude or blunt or anything. You know me guys, like I love to share everything with you guys. I wish I could, but I just, I can't, not in this situation. So the next question is, Mia, do you prefer sleeping in your own bed or in the bed of your human? <laughs> I think Mia definitely prefers to sleep in her own bed. I only recently figured out why and it's because I remember uh, when I was getting photos of all the puppies of the litter from my breeder, they sent me a couple photos of all the puppies sleeping and there would always be one puppy off like away from the group sleeping all by herself and guess who that was? Was that you? She wants to still be able to see you and be near your presence but she also wants to have her own space. And Corgi Muses also are Asks, does Mia need a leash every time she goes out or can she run around freely without the leash? Mia is generally always on a lead. Obviously we don't always want her to be on a lead so sometimes we'll take her to beaches and also parks where you can have your dog off leash. So yeah, like most of the time Mia has to be on a leash because I don't want her running into traffic or anything. But when we can take her to a park or a beach or wherever that she can be off lead, we do so that she can have some like free time to run around and have fun. And the very last question is how much does she shed? And the answer to that is quite a bit. Mia's not quite a year old yet, but here in Australia, it just became summer like a couple months ago now. It's starting to cool down a bit. But when it became summer, she started shedding like crazy. And we used the Ferminator on her and we used brushes and we brushed her and we washed her and she shed everywhere. And it was crazy. I was getting like bags of hair out of her every time I brushed her. But now I've been brushing her um, recently, like the last two or three weeks. And I've only been getting out like little handfuls of hair from her brush. But saying that, like I've had cats and animals most of my life and they've always shed. So I'm kind of used to like animal shedding and it doesn't really bother me that much. All right guys, so we've been filming for a while now and Mia's completely lost all attention. 
<laughs> you guys probably saw it during this video, but um, now I have a treat to get her attention just for the end. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and thank you to the people who asked questions about Mia. It was really fun to film. Do you want a treat? Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness! Kiss! Good girl! Don't forget to like this video, subscribe down below if you haven't, and please turn on my post notifications so that you never miss a thing, and you'll definitely know when I post another Mia video because it will pop up in your emails. Mia, now you have to say goodbye too, okay? Bye! Say goodbye!